everybody. So, yeah, here it is. Um, I hope it's in stores from, uh, from today. Um, it's supposed to be, it's our seventh issue. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here because this morning I was in a Eurostar in Amsterdam and it didn't leave. So I thought, mm, uh, how do I get to London? But um, I got a flight and um, I'm uh, really excited to let you know something about this magazine I make together with Ernst van der Hoeven and also about the, the new issue we made about the trousers. So um, MacGuffin um, is a design magazine that is um, not about design, so maybe I can explain you a little bit about that and um, let you show a little fragment of um, a film you might know, uh, Marnie from Hitchcock. Um, because as you might know, MacGuffin is an object that um, is used in Hitchcock movies to, to set the story in motion. Um, it, like this one um, in Marnie, a yellow handbag that is a sort of leitmotif and uh, something that really gets you into the story. Um, so we used the name because we wanted to create a platform for things um, that was not so much about the design of objects, but uh, rather about the stories they generate. Um, so thank you, Hitchcock. Um, I started uh, the magazine together with Ernst uh, um, four years ago, 2015, and we were mainly inspired, or rather uninspired, you could say, by, um, by the congested design world that we were working in. Um, it was so obsessed with commercial success and with star designers and with new chairs like uh, this one. Um, and um, in the meantime, we were more interested in home-crafted chairs um, like that one. Um, a MacGuffin, you could say, um, and we didn't want to discuss innovation, but the, um, like we call it, the afterlife of everyday uh, objects. Um, so we started talking to experts and investors to pitch our idea for a magazine, and it was always something that went like this. Um, we would love to make a magazine because it combines research and personal stories, and then they would say, hmm, okay, make a website. Um, or we would say, we would love to make a printed magazine because we want to have layers of text and images. Uh, and they would say, well, make an exhibition. Um, so there wasn't a lot of um, investors um, that uh, were interested, but of course we had to make a magazine, so we did. And we adopted Tina Brown's famous mantra, um, if you don't have a budget, have a point of view. And um, we kept telling that ourselves. Um, and what we also did was we asked uh, or applied for a grant at the Dutch uh, Fund for Creative Industries um, and it was honored. Um, so um, that was the reason that we could start and um, it wasn't a lot of money and it was only for the research but we had something. And um, so we made the first issue dedicated to the bed um, because the bed is the beginning and the end for most of us um, in our lives. And um, the first issue sold out in pretty much a couple of weeks, which we didn't expect at all, so we had to make a second issue, and we thought, oh God, what are we going to do? Um, um, but it was difficult to find another theme. After the bed, a piece of furniture, we wanted to do something that is a building uh, component, so we thought the window. Um, and after that, we explored uh, a material um, slash uh, object, so the rope. Then we wanted to do something that was more in between, so we delved into the life of the sink. Um, and then we thought, let's go back to a piece of furniture and go to cabinets, but then in an unexpected way. So like this super box by Ettore Zotsas, which is not so much a piece of furniture, but more like a character um, called the suicide of the architect. And then the last issue was devoted to the, to the ball, um, like these from our local football club, which we dissected to see what's on the inside of the football, which is really interesting. Lots of history there and, and, um, and little text as well. Um, yeah, so we're pretty much involved uh, with uh, the two of us in every aspect of uh, the making of the magazine from research to art direction to writing, distribution, production, like this here. So this is us uh, 
at uh, the Amstel River in Amsterdam, working on a photo shoot that was in the window issue entitled um, Green Curtains. Um, and this is us on our way to Hornbach, the Home Depot store with Enoch Sings that were photographed and then returned because we couldn't afford to buy them. Um, and it turned out to be a wonderful production by Scheltens Abenes, photographers. And then after the fourth issue, um, we were asked to present it in Milan at the Salona del Mobile, uh, the design fair. And um, so it was an exhibition after all that we made and in the lion's den. And um, these were all sync related objects uh, with connected um, podcasts about the life of sins. And after Milan, so the ball was rolling in a way and other exhibitions um, followed like this one on collecting in Rotterdam called Finders Keepers. And uh, we amassed more than um, 5,000 objects from 500, um, uh, 50 different collections. Um, and it was something that we did in three weeks. So it was like this crazy production, but really interesting. Um, but if I close my eyes, I can still see the hundreds of razor blades I had to arrange in a grid there on the floor. It took me two days, I think. Um, so this was a little bit of an introduction, maybe too long, I will hurry up. Um, but I think it throws some light um, on the issue that um, I'd love to show you now, the trousers, and tell you a little bit more about the way we approach our subjects and, and combine textual research and uh, visual stories. So we always start by dividing the magazine into chapters and with the trousers it was clear from the beginning that uh, we wanted to discuss three sub-teams in a way. Um, pants as a vehicle for culture but also uh, materiality and overproduction and then the third one obviously I would say um, gender and um, power. Um, and of course we didn't call these chapters, um, culture or production or gender, but um, pants up, pants down and pants off. That just uh, sounds better, we thought. Um, so this thematic division then leads to text briefs and most of the times a messy sketch by me like this one, um, a flat plan, but we have to make it to see the rhythm of the texts and the images before we really go into uh, the editing um, and um, the combination of text and image is so vital in, in shaping our stories. It's a little bit like uh, making a cake or a mattress, uh, like this one from, from the bad issue. Um, so for the first chapter of the trousers uh, issue, we asked a photographer from um, a Lithuanian photographer, Vitautis Kumza, to make a series that would focus literally on the life of things, or in this case, uh, the life of trousers. Um, so that's the cover on the left. Um, it's a whole series and they've all got uh, names as well. Um, but we were also fascinated by the popularity of the zip off and the survival pants uh, and um, the crazy thing that a survival pants is part of a hobby. Um, so we asked design uh, studio Sul Sol Sol from um, Brazil and Germany to dive into the world of uh, prepping and they made us this ABC of uh, neo-survivalism with all kinds of uh, horrifying uh, pants and trousers um, like um, leggings in camouflage style. Um, so that was the first chapter and the second one um, started actually with an essay that we wrote, uh, not wrote of course, but we read <laughs> by <laughs> Umberto Eco um, and it's called Lumber Thought and it's um, a very clear and, and interesting description of how the tight waistband of his jeans makes Eco aware of uh, how uh, the physical aspects of trousers guide you in your behavior during the day. So we thought it was very interesting how material um, is so influential in your life. Um, and we thought it had to be followed up with um, a chapter devoted to fast fashion and overproduction, uh, which we tried to clarify with these illustrations by uh, Rudy Gwetsch, a French illustrator. 
Um, but we also looked into the more personal, physical aspects of the trousers. So um, we asked a fantastic man, um, editor Gert Junkers, a friend of ours, to write about his favorite pants. And um, he came with a fantastic co collection like this G-Star uh, trousers on the left that he once bought because it had such a well-proportioned ass and cross. Uh, <laughs> I had no idea before that men actually thought of these things in a dressing room, but um, apparently they are. And um, yeah, we had a long thought about how to portray Gerd Spence, especially since not all of them are around anymore, like his favorite uh, corduroy trousers that, was, um, that were ripped apart by his puppy dog. Um, so we thought it, it would be nice to bring back, literally, his trousers back to life. And um, we were in contact with a student from the Rietveld uh, Art School in Amsterdam who worked with rendering software to make installations. And um, so we worked together, we scanned Gert's trousers, the, one, the ones that he had still left, and we made pattern drawings of them and then Carl rebuilt them in a 3D program to make them dance, um, which was really nice because we could do anything with the pants that we wanted to. Um, uh, it's actually used a lot for um, modeling clothes in, in games and also in the, in the fashion industry. Um, so um, we could even rebuild Gert's uh, trousers that he called his wrong trousers, here on the left. Sort of mood board pants that he once had and uh, threw away because he, uh, he wore them when um, he was doing an interview with Blur, the pop group. And um, he came in, Gerd, for the interview, and one of the Blur people asked him, did you see the Wallace and Gromit film? He said, no, it's called The Wrong Trousers. And he was so sad about it that he gave it away, <laughs> which is actually a shame, <laughs> because it's a really nice trousers. But, um, yeah. Uh, our last chapter is about radical trousers, uh, which is a, um, a feature we have in every issue, radical something. Um, and uh, it was a good opening because it was a, a chapter devoted to trousers and gender. Um, so in this chapter there's a lot of women pockets and men skirts and smoking for women, etc. Um, but also a collection of female artists from the 60s and 70s that used their bodies to uh, highlight gender issues. And um, actually it's uh, this radical ish, um, article is always hard to make because we really have to dive into the estate of a lot of artists. Some of them aren't here anymore and it's always hard to get those images and to you, yeah, be able to use them as well. But we thought it's so important to show um, these artists. Uh, it's sort of me to um, eat your heart out, something else than wearing a black dress at the Oscar festival. Um, so yeah, um, this is just to give you a little insight in how we make the magazine and also in uh, our way of working, which is quite labor um, intensive. And that's why we're always late with our issues. So uh, actually we're one month late right now. But um, yeah, hey, well, that's the fun of being an independent magazine. Um, you're independent, so. But we had to go, um, to our graphic designer, Sandra Kastner, on her camping break to look at the proofs. So we drove to the Achterhoek with our page proofs and uh, our children were around them as well. Um, and we made it just in time for London. Um, so um, here it is. Um, yeah, I hope I've given you a little peek into our magazine and the uh, desire to combine in-depth research and visual appeal and uh, in our working process, which is a lot of pants up, pants down, pants off uh, in this case. Um, and uh, yeah, please check it out in your local bookstore. I hope it's there. I think so. And um, there's our Insta as well. Thank you so much for your attention.